On the last post, I showed how to create a golf shaft by using a hybrid approach, either with a table saw or a band saw and a planer, and then bringing it to a cradle and tapering it down into an octagon. I actually didn't show those steps, but I do have videos on my Instagram of how to taper a golf shaft from a square billet into an, a tapered octagon and then to 16 sides, whatever you call that. Um, and then you can keep tapering it down um, if you want with the plane. Um, but I use this trapping plane to uh, finish it up and get a nice smooth finish very quickly. In terms of performance, that's the kind of the art, I would say. Um, there's a, um, a lot of ways to figure out how to uh, get a shaft to perform the way you want it to work. I don't know what they did in the old days. My guess is they kind of just felt it. They certainly didn't have frequency matching in the long nose era. I can't imagine old Tom doing anything like that or um, even loading the shaft to see how much it, it uh, weighs, break, you know, deflects with a weight. So all I do is I just take a shaft that I like. This is kind of my baseline shaft and I feel it, put my hand here, bend it, bend it, do the same thing in the same spot, bend it. This feels slightly stiffer to me. Um, I'll do it this different direction as well. So that that's what I do. I just kind of feel it and bend it, but I don't want to overdo it. I want to make sure that the shaft is slightly stiffer than I want. After the shaft is glued to the head, then I can waggle it before I put the whipping or the stain or anything like that. And if I think it's still too stiff, then I'll take down the shaft a little more. Then I'll finish the head. Very rarely, I'll go out and play with it and it performs so poorly that I need to uh, take the shaft down some more. But the one thing you don't want to do is overdo it with the shaft and make it too thin right away. You can always take more off later.